In this video, we're looking at resonance and normal modes, in other words, standing waves on a string fixed at both ends. We're going to start with some general results and then finish with several examples to illustrate the sorts of calculations that come up here. So to give you some context on what we're looking at in the picture, we have some kind of oscillator attached to this string that's fixed at both ends. And we're able to control the frequency of oscillation that we're driving the string at. And we're going to sweep upward from very low frequency to higher and higher frequency and look for these resonances on the string. So the basic physical principle behind this is that wave reflections will interfere constructively with each other as long as our wavelength matches the boundary conditions for the string, which in this case is zero displacement at both ends. So any wavelength you can come up with that will fit on the string nicely so that it's zero at both ends is going to be one of these special ones that interferes constructively with itself. And if you're driving the string at the corresponding frequency, you're going to see the amplitude grow immensely compared to the other frequencies in between. So just to clarify what's going on with these resonances, when I hit just the right frequency for this first resonance, the middle of the string is just going to flop up and down at large amplitude while the ends remain fixed. When I sweep up to a higher frequency, therefore a shorter wavelength, and hit the next special wavelength, I'll see two of these large amplitude places, and those are moving opposite directions all the time. So the string flops that way, and then it reverses and flops this way. Then I sweep to a higher frequency, and I get three of these regions of large amplitude. And I tried to illustrate with two different thicknesses so you can see how they're moving different directions. So these are called standing waves because when you actually observe them, these regions of large amplitude are just blurred out. And they're separated by these points that appear motionless in between. And there's names for all this stuff. So I'll just use the third resonance here to illustrate. All of those motionless points are called nodes. Well, all these locations of maximum amplitude are called antinodes. And if I just label these resonances by frequency, I'm going to call that first one F1, second one F2, third one F3, fourth one F4. Again, the wave speed is fixed here. So if I think about the wave speed equation V equals F lambda, a larger frequency means a shorter wavelength. So I just labeled these an increasing frequency. And there's special names for this stuff. So F1 is called the fundamental. It's also known as the first harmonic. F2 could be called then the second harmonic, but is also called the first overtone. And then you would proceed from there. So now our job is to find some useful mathematical patterns in all this so that we can get into solving some interesting problems. So I'm going to try to write down the wavelength of each of these resonances in terms of the length of the string L. In my first picture, I can see I'm fitting exactly half a wavelength on there. So a full wavelength would be a full wiggle up and down and back to the starting point. This is a half. So I can say 1 half of lambda 1, the wavelength of the first resonance, is equal to L. And then solve for lambda 1, and I get lambda 1 equals 2L. For the second harmonic, I have lambda 2 equals L. That's exactly one wavelength. In my third picture, that's 1 and a half wavelengths, or 3 halves lambda 3, that's equal to L. And when I solve for lambda 3, I get 2L over 3. In my fourth picture, that's exactly two wavelengths. And I get that lambda 4 is L over 2. But my goal here is to express lambda n in general. So I'm going to modify things a little bit so it's easier to see the pattern. Instead of L over 2, I'm going to say 2L over 4. Instead of saying lambda 2 is L, I'm going to say lambda 2 is 2L over 2. And now I see the pattern. Lambda 1 is 2L over 1. That denominator is just equal to the index of the wavelength that I'm looking at. So for my nth harmonic, I have lambda n equals 2L over n. So then I want to look for a pattern in the frequencies. And the way I relate these wavelengths to frequency is with the wave speed equation. All right, so all these waves travel with the same speed on the string. Solving for frequency, I could say f is v over lambda. And I could say the nth resonant frequency would be v over the nth resonant wavelength. Plugging in the formula that I just got for the nth resonant wavelength, 
dividing by it is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal, so I get nv over 2l. That equation is sometimes useful, but not as useful as what I'm about to do. So I noticed that f1, the fundamental frequency, just plugging in n equals 1 into this formula, is v over 2l. And then I realized the v over 2l in this formula could then just be replaced with f1. And we discover something really useful. The fn is n times f1. In other words, every resonant frequency on the string is an integer multiple of the fundamental frequency. OK, that completes our little list of three useful equations for now. And now we can get into some examples. First, a string fixed at both ends has a wave speed of v equals 40 meters per second and a length of L equals 1.0 meters. Compute the wavelength and frequency of the first three harmonics. So we just have to keep the picture in mind of what those look like. Remember that lambda 1, well, half of lambda 1 was equal to L, so lambda 1 was equal to 2L, 2 times 1 meter, or 2.0 meters. And then how do I get at the frequency here? I just use the wave speed equation again. So V equals F lambda means that F is V over lambda. So I get that F1 is equal to V over lambda 1. That's 40 over 2, and that's 20 hertz. Lambda 2, recalling the picture, that's where a whole wavelength fit exactly onto the length of the string. In other words, lambda 2 is equal to L. So the second resonant wavelength is going to be 1.0 meters. I can get clever with the next frequency. Either you could do the calculation the same way I did the first time and do V over lambda 2, or I could be sneaky about it and say that it's twice the fundamental using that last formula we derived. So that's 40 hertz. Same answer either way. Lambda 3, that's the one where we had one and a half wavelengths fitting on the length of the string. So lambda 3 was a 2L over 3. And that's 2 times 1 over 3, or 2 thirds, or approximately 0.667. In F3, I'll just stay with my clever trick. That's 3 times the fundamental frequency. So it gives me 60 hertz. All right, next example. A string fixed at both ends is driven with an oscillator. So just like the experiment we did on the last slide, two adjacent resonances are found at 100 hertz and 150 hertz. In other words, there was no resonance in between. We investigated very thoroughly, but we found one resonance at 100 hertz and the next one at 150 hertz. Determine which harmonics we're looking at and predict the frequency of the next one. So the key here is to just remember that the nth resonant frequency is given by n times the fundamental. So the difference between any two adjacent resonant frequencies is going to be equal to the frequency of the fundamental here. And if that's not clear, I'll just illustrate how it works out. I'm saying that the fundamental frequency is 50 hertz. And that means my second harmonic is going to be twice that. And it means my third harmonic is three times that. That's 150 hertz. And so I figured out the answer to that part. These two resonances that we're looking at are the second and third harmonics on the string. And then we're asked for the next one. Well, that's just four times the fundamental, or 200 hertz. All right, the final example. I have a standing wave with three anti-nodes by driving the string at 25 hertz. The length of the string is given. And I want to compute the wave speed. So remember, to get the wave speed, I need the frequency and the wavelength. I've already got the frequency of these waves, that's 25 hertz. Now I need the wavelength. So I can quote the formula for the third harmonic. This thing has three antinodes. But in practice, I like to go back and just make little sketches. So that's the resonance we're talking about. And I can see that 3 halves lambda is equal to the length of the string here. In other words, lambda is 2L over 3. And plugging in my numbers, I have 2 times 2.2. Over three, and that comes out to 1.467 meters, just keeping a little bit of extra precision. Now, to get the wave speed, this particular frequency is 25 hertz. 
It corresponds to a wavelength of 1.467 meters. Remember that a hertz is an inverse second, so this does give me meters per second. And it comes out to three sig figs as 36.7 meters per second. If you find the physics content on Zach's Lab helpful, click on the Zach's Lab logo on the right to browse playlists and subscribe to the channel. I produce over 100 new videos per month, and subscribing is the easiest way to find new content. Thanks for watching.